Um, what they're doing now, um, well, here, I'll just kind of pick this up from his press release. In the fall of 2014, All Seeing Eyes released their debut album, Trinity Road, to widespread critical acclaim. The album is unusual for a few reasons. It's a double-disc, 18-track extravaganza featuring special guests including Ben Jackson from Crimson Glory and Avenging, uh, Avenging Benji, uh, members of War Drum, Jaded Star, uh, Air Raid, um, and other various artists. So now, in 2016, All Seeing Eyes have decided to give something back due to several personal experience, experiences that All Seeing Eyes had. Um, they've made the decision to use this project to help those less fortunate. All output in the future will be for no profit. Instead, all monies will now be donated to various charitable organizations. The band is currently in the studio pinning a new album that will be jam-packed full of thought-provoking, feel-good progressive power metal, and again will feature an array of very special guests. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Now, he did also let me know that He's still trying to work things out to get Tim Olsen uh, to be part of that, as we talked about last week. Sweet. So all the money now, all of it, is going to charitable organizations. That's cool. And that's awesome. And another great feel-good story. No, awesome. That's back-to-back, you know, just uh, really cool stories about um, what metal bands are doing to, uh, you know, not only raise funds, but, uh, you know, just have a lot of bands and a lot of artists coming together to pull stuff off like that. It's really cool, too. And, you know, we, we talked a couple episodes with Darren Crisp on, you know, being able to even do projects like this because of technology and allowing you to be able to send, you know, tracks, you know, <laughs> via the Internet in a matter of, you know, five minutes of here, you know, here are the guitar riffs I just wrote. Check this out, dude in Denmark, you know, hint, hint, Kim Olsen, you know, <laughs> and then right. have him, you know, write a keyboard part to it and then have that go to, you know what I mean? It's just amazing. That so many artists around the world are able to contribute to be able to raise funds for, um, you know, uh, charity or charitable organizations of their choice to be able to do that. I think that's awesome stuff. And the fact that the entire, all the proceeds, everything that this band makes, every penny um, goes to uh, charity, I think is really cool. Now, I think it is, too. I, I think it is, too. And I think, uh, Darren, Darren Crisp, if you're listening... I would love to see you be a part of this project. That's Just a good saying. point. Yeah. Darren's used okay. to working with all types of artists all over the place. So there you go, yeah. Darren. I know you listen to the show. You like the Facebook page. If you're listening, you maybe should uh, <laughs> reach out at All Sing Eyes and see if uh, you can throw down a couple tracks with those guys. That'd be awesome. That would but be. Um, I'm going to – I know I hate to do this because we just had like two really positive feel-good stories. And this – isn't necessarily a bad or good story, but I think it is a conversation that we should have because many metalheads have it. And I'm curious what camp Biv is in. You can hear what camp I'm in. And this is one of the more, this is almost like a David Lee Roth, Sammy Hagar like argument amongst many uh, uh, fans of Van Halen. Uh, Fans of metal are so split more so in the negative than positive side when it comes to the band Baby Metal. And Baby Metal, of course, is in the news a lot most of the time uh, for, you know, appearing on, you know, Stephen Colbert or on some of the late night shows or the stuff they do. Um, and this week, um, not only did Rob Zombie announce that he's a fan of Baby Metal, in which his fans, like, ripped him apart, dude. For like saying on Facebook that he likes baby metal. Now, by the way, here are some fans or here are some bands that have come out and said, yeah, we actually dig baby metal a lot. Let me name them for you. Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, the Deftones, which who really cares? Carcass and Dragon Force all have either been on the European tour circuit with these guys or have had some sort of uh, just fan appreciation of baby metal. Those are some pretty big names I just mentioned. And Rob Zombie did. Well, guess what? Another band, a picture that's floating around out there that just uh, is kind of going viral. And some of their fans are going, what the hell, dude, is Lamb of God, who, uh, you know, just took a picture backstage uh, a couple days ago with baby metal. And, of course, everyone's like freaking out over the fact that, dude, screw those guys. 
And I just want to have this conversation, not only between me and you, Biv, because these are the kind of conversations we have as metalheads anyway, way before we did a podcast. But I'd also like to know what our listeners think uh, of Baby Metal as well. We'd love to get your feedback and share that with us on the Facebook page or on Twitter or email us or whatever. We'll share that with you here later on in the show. But I'm curious what camp you may be in and what our listeners is in. I'll give you my thoughts first. I think Baby Metal is a band that is actually pretty cool. And it's only because I like weird-ass Japanese music. uh, And Japanese metal, to me, has always been very cool. I always have an appreciation for, uh, and especially the ones that don't sing in English. Um, and that's most of them. Uh, Maximum the Hormone is another band that most people haven't heard of. I love Maximum the Hormone. They're weirder than shit, but they're a great band. Uh, Galnerius, who um, is is a great band as well, and actually really, really talented, um, with uh, uh, incredible guitarists and just really, really just awesome, awesome music. And then you have Baby Metal, who's, you know, don't get me wrong, vocally, the, the girls that are the face of the band... You know, there's rumors that none of them like metal. They don't know metal at all, but they put the devil horns up everywhere they go. So it's all fake and they're being posers and blah, blah, blah. And they, even the you know, some of the, the people who've like, you know, formed the band, they essentially are a Japanese metal boy band. You know what I mean? Like what we think of here in the States about like an NSYNC or a Backstreet Boys where this is just a manufactured act. That is what baby metal is in Japan. And a lot of people get pissed off at that because it's not authentic metal, dude. It's bull. I think, and especially the Kami band, which is their actual band, you know, the ones who actually play the instruments, those guys are freaking awesome, man. Like, musically, they're incredibly good. Like, and just all over the place music-wise. I mean, if you listen um, to their more recent album, a lot of Dragon Force-like sounding stuff on there. Uh, Just, I mean, they're just a really good band musically and vocally in the whole gimmick. I get it. It's cutesy, you know, Japanese porn for perverts. I get all that. I'm just saying as far as a band is concerned, you could do way worse. If you want to talk about shitty music, I could lit read you a laundry list of awful, awful, awful music. That's way worse in the metal community than baby metal. That's just my opinion. Biv, I'm curious what your thoughts are on them. I've listened to their stuff. I know you're not as into them as me. And I'm not saying I'm a huge fan. I just think it's pretty cool. Maybe it's a gimmick. Maybe it's whatever. I think it's pretty cool. And a lot of other bands seem to think so also. Much to the chagrin of their fans. Biv, what do you think of those guys? Well, um, first of all, they look like 13-year-old Japanese prostitutes. (laughs) Um, You know, I just, and it is a gimmick. I mean, it's totally a gimmick. Uh, they're dancing around. It's all choreographed. To your point, it's a girl version, a Japanese version of 98 Degrees or, you know. Wow, you went 98 boy- Degrees on us, man. Yeah, or insert boy band here. <laughs> um, so musically, you're right. Um, and I did see him on the um, on the late night show. Um, and, you know, I can see the I can see the gimmick and why people are attracted to it. Uh, but I, I guess how long is this going to last? Are we even going to, is this, to me, this screams like the Spice Girls. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, this is a metal version of the Spice Girls. Yeah. It's, but it's their second album that they just released and it's been pretty, cl- pretty critically acclaimed and actually pretty damn good. Like I'm sure, it, I'm sure it's selling, it, you know, but the question is an album from now or two albums from now when the gimmick wears off. Are they still going to be standing? Well, that's true. Or are they going to do like is is part of their attraction? Um, and I want to be careful with how I say this. Is this going to be like a menudo like thing? You know, where the girls get too old and they're replaced by younger Japanese chicks. So they still look like they're like teenage girls dancing around on the stage. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I think so, very well could because, I mean, they really don't do much other than I mean, yeah, they're the vocals. But I mean, come on. That's not that hard. As far as musically, the rest of it is all, you know, the band itself. And those guys are freaking incredible. In fact, I should do some more homework on the on the the actual band behind Baby Metal because those guys are great. And if they're in any other bands, I want to check them out, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not yet to your point. 
there's much worse metal out there. Oh my god. Way but I worse. can totally see I can totally see where traditional metal fans are like, screw that, dude. It's manufactured. And they're right. It is. Um so where do I fall on it? I'm not gonna buy it. I mean it's not gonna be something that's gonna be and nothing that they've done will be in my rotation. Um so you know, it is what it is. It's a gimmick, and some people will buy it. I just won't be one of them. Well, self-admittedly, some of their stuff is in my rotation. I will admit that. And seriously, I get Lamb of God fans or, you know, fans of uh, of Metallica and Slayer and all of them going, dude, what the hell? Rob Zombie, come on. Are you trying to be a pure metal fan and, and say that you're a Rob Zombie fan? Piss off. Come on. I mean, that guy hasn't done anything metal in, what, 15 years? Let's be honest. Really? I mean, even White Zombie was was pushing the envelope if you consider them metal at all. La Sex Orsisto was definitely metal. Astro Creep was kind of dance metal, if that makes any sense. Anything Rob Zombie's done after that has not even been anything that I would call metal ever. And yet, for Rob Zombie fans to be like, dude, that's not metal. Well, neither's the shit you listen to. Anyway, sorry, I'm off well, my soapbox. Well said. <laughs> Come on. Well said. Don't give me the purity test if you're a Rob Zombie fan. Piss off. Anyway, that's news in metal. And what are your thoughts on baby metal? Let us know. Hey, on, everyone. This is Mark Kennedy from Damn Nation's Day. You're listening to According to Metal. It's time for new metal album reviews. That was Freya's Choice off of Grand Magus' most recent album, Sword Songs, which right away, I will tell you, ranks right up there with one of my favorite names of an album I've ever heard in my entire life. But I first heard of Grand uh, Grand Magus actually uh, about six, seven years ago. Um, I heard a track, Northern Star, um, that they had, and it was off of the uh, Hammer of the North album like six, seven years ago. And I remember hearing the song going, who in the hell is this? Seeing the name going, these guys rule. And then to be honest with you, just kind of forgot about them. And then when I heard that their new album was coming out and it was entitled Sword Songs, again, which just absolutely rules as a title, I knew we had to review it. And prior to hearing it, Grand Magus themselves branded this album as kind of heavier than what they've done before. And I think that turned out to be true, actually. They they have a traditional heavy metal feel to them. You know, I guess like fans of, say, Sabbath or you know, Deep Purple even, you know, that kind of vibe. But, you know, those who, like me, at times, and or as Biv said in the last episode, like a little Velveeta with their metal, um, you know, they definitely have a side of cheesiness to them. And uh, if you dig Manowar, for example, you're going to dig Grand Magus. But I got my own thoughts on the album. I thought it was very interesting and can't wait to share with you my thoughts on them. But I dug it. What did Biv think? Let's find out. Well, Biv, what would you think of Grand Magus and Sword Songs, man? Well, first of all, Sword Songs... It sounds like a Steel Panther album. <laughs> well, that's I. You're right. Um, I was thinking more of the Viking. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, people play swords. I guess maybe uh, an entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But at any rate, um, you know, this is a this is as embarrassing as this is to say. How these guys have flown underneath my radar. I have no idea because, as we've mentioned many times on the show, I scour, as you like to put it, Jason, I scour the interwebs all the time looking for bands. And how a band like this has gone into their eighth studio album without me knowing about them, um, and they consistently put out an album every two years like clockwork. Yep. 
um, which I love. So they're not, you know, they didn't go Guns N' Roses on us and you know, make us wait 20 years for a CD. Um, you know, 